Okay, this morning, uh, talking about the 357C, uh, message boards, we all, we all get on there, those of us who uh, claim not to pay attention to the message boards are absolutely full of shit. Forgive the, uh, forgive the glare I'm driving as I'm doing this video. Um, the, the question is, not which handgun is best for self-defense 45 ACP 9mm um, 357 Magnum 38 Special 40 Smith & Wesson I have them all I've shot them all fire them all very well from the platforms that I have to launch them uh, Browning High Powers Glocks um, Taurus Revolvers you've seen them in my videos um, 357 SIG, I did a video, uh, it's possibly the, in the P239 uh, compact series of SIG pistols, it's possibly the best concealed carry uh, option available. And the reason that I said that is it's a SIG pistol, well made, uh, with a capacity of eight or nine rounds in 357 SIG caliber. Now the 357 SIG, you can say, well, why not just use 9mm plus B plus? I can do the same thing. You can do about the same thing, uh, but not quite. Uh, the 357 SIG, the, the truth of the matter is, the 357 SIG was created originally to duplicate the ballistics of the 357 Magnum cartridge, which we all know is the gold standard for stopping power, if you want to use that term. I hate using that term because it cannot be defined. Uh, one thing is for sure, though, one thing is for certain that we do know in ballistics and in using handguns, actually a couple of things, is that handguns are, are weak instruments for self-defense to begin with. Secondly, uh, and that's why I advocate officers carrying uh, patrol carbines, uh, either AKs, folding stock SKSs would be a good choice, Mini 14s or ARs. As a primary weapon, get out of the patrol car with a carbine um, because it's a primary weapon. Why would you get out of the car to begin with, with a secondary weapon? So, that said, we're talking about handguns and last ditch effort, you pull out a handgun for self-defense. I always ask my students this, if you're in a Waffle House, this is a, this is an actual occurrence too. If you're in a Waffle House after a, a day at the range and you've got your pistol on you and it's, you know, you got your concealed carry license and some thugs come in, three guys come in and they point guns at the cashier. They shoot one of them because they don't comply. <clears throat> you're in there and you're in fear of your life. Uh, the thugs turn their attention towards the uh, occupants of the restaurant, in this case you and your your fellow citizens around you, you reach back and you touch that weapon that you've got in that concealed carry holster, what do you want that weapon to be? Do you want that weapon to be um, a 45 ACP? Do you want it to be uh, a 9 millimeter uh, Glock with plus P plus loads in it? Or do you want that weapon to be something that will blast right through their ass and put them down in a, in a second? Um, if you think about what you carry in terms of when I need it, what will it do? What effect will it do? Any advantage that you can get is, is worth having. The 357 SIG offers an advantage over 9mm, over 40 Smith & Wesson, over 45 ACP. Not to mention which, all of the manufacturers, I don't care which one of them you choose, Corbon, Winchester, Remington, all of them, any of them, all calibers, are designed to do exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. They're going to they're gonna try to uh, meet FBI protocols. Uh, which is 14 to 17 inches of penetration and dump all its energy into the target. So yeah, from that respect, it doesn't matter which caliber you choose or which bullet you're choosing in, the, in that 
line because they're all going to do the same thing. I, I, I feel like shooting semi-wad cutters or bullets with flat, flat points, uh, solids, hard cast lead bullets or soft cast lead bullets that will blow right through a target with, with good shot placement. Hell, I can hit the central nervous system and I'm, I'm much better off. But the 357 SIG, regardless of whether you like it or don't like it, and I'm not advocating either way, I do have a 357 SIG and I like it. And I do carry it. It's not the only gun I carry, but I do carry it. And I carry it, uh, and I believe in it, and I trust it, because it does offer me an advantage of penetration, of stopping power on paper, foot pounds of energy, period. It will provide, it will duplicate, it will, in the uh, non-standard factory loadings, Underwood, Double Tap, and Buffalo Bore all make extremely good loads for 357 SIG which launch a 125 grain bullet at 1,500 feet per second or more and generate 700 foot-pounds of energy. That is the gold standard of stopping power for the 357 Magnum. So um, those are facts. Use them to your advantage. Uh, I do, and you should too. More to come.